In this section, you will learn how psychopharmacologists manipulate and record from the brain using chemical methods, as well as describe three genetic techniques used to study brain and behavior. Psychopharmacologists are interested in administering drugs to see how the effect of particular neurotransmitters can affect people's behavior and mental processes. The routes of drug administration are, for the most part, feeding it to the subject, providing it in an intragastric fashion, or injecting it in a hypodermic way. A problem with these peripheral routes of administration is that many drugs do not readily pass through the blood-brain barrier. To overcome this problem, drugs can be administered in small amounts through a fine or hollow tube called a canola that has been stereotactically implanted in the brain. Selective chemical lesions basically are the effects of surgical, electrolytic, or cryogenic lesions are frequently difficult to interpret because they affect all neurons in the target area. In some cases, it is possible to make more selective lesions by injecting neurotoxins, which are poisons, that have an affinity for certain components of the nervous system. There are many selective neurotoxins. For example, when either acanic acid or ibotenic acid is administered by microinjection, it is preferentially taken up by cell bodies at the tip of the canola and destroy those neurons while leaving neurons with axons passing through the area, largely unscathed. Another selective neurotoxin that has been widely used is 6-OHDA. You don't have to know this. You just know that it is taken up by only those neurons that release the neurotransmitter norepinephrine or dopamine, and it leaves other neurons at the injection site undamaged. Two common techniques to measure chemical activity in the brain are the 2DG technique, as described when we discussed the PET scan. This is the uh, one molecule that is able to trick the blood-brain barrier. And the reason why is because it mimics glucose, which is a large molecule that the brain does like. So the animal is injected with radioactive 2DG and allows the animal to engage in a behavior of interest. Eventually, the subject is killed. The brain would then be removed and sliced, and through autoradiography, we're able to see where the activity was accumulated in the brain slices. Cerebral dialysis is another way to measure chemical activity in the brain, and this measures extracellular concentration of specific neurochemicals in live animals. This requires the implantation of a fine tube with a short semi-permeable section in the brain. And by semi-permeable, we mean that it allows certain substances to pass through it, but not others, especially allowing the passage of a solvent, the liquid in which uh, a solute is dissolved to form a solution, but not of certain solutes, which are the minor component of a solution that would then be dissolved into the solvent. In other, way, in other words, we'd basically be able to measure what uh, chemicals were actively present in this particular brain. Once in the tube, they can then be collected for freezing, storage, and then analyzed later. Genetics is a science that has made significant progress in the last two decades, and biopsychologists are taking advantage of these benefits. Gene knockout techniques are procedures for creating organisms that lack a particular gene under investigation. The subjects missing a given gene can provide insight as to what the gene controls. However, it's important for us to note that it is difficult to interpret the results because most behavior is controlled by a lot of genes and removing one gene may alter the expression of others, and this can then lead to a lot of confounding variables, including the compensation for the missing gene. A study done in 2008 consisted of creating what's known as a transgenic 
mice. And this basically led to the insertion of a defective human gene that had been found to be associated with schizophrenia in a Scottish family, with a particularly high incidence of the disorder. The transgenic mice displayed a variety of cerebral abnormalities, such as reduced cerebral cortex and enlarged ventricles, and abnormal behaviors that were reminiscent of human schizophrenia. Treating neurological disease by replacing faulty genes in patients suffering from genetic disorders is an exciting but as yet unrealized goal. Please note that mice that are the products of gene knockout techniques are referred to as knockout mice. In another gene replacement technique, a gene is replaced with one that is identical except for the addition of a few bases that can act as a switch. This would allow for us to turn the gene on or off in response to particular chemicals or light. As a result, the gene can be activated or suppressed at a particular point in development.